And we just thank you, Father, that because of him, it's all good. We thank you, Father God, that you have created us in your image. We thank you, Lord, for the victory. Father, we thank you for keeping those that are on the road traveling, Father. We thank you for the blood of Jesus over them. We thank you, Lord, for angels that are encamped around them. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the love that is shown toward each and every family member. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're only good. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So go ahead and uh, stay standing. We're going to have a selection tonight. We're going to do things a little different. We're going to be led in, in worship by Minister King. Hallelujah. How many you love Jesus tonight? Thank you, Father. I said, how many you really love him tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I love you. Thank you. Jesus. For God so loved the world Hallelujah. that he gave his only begotten son. Do you believe in him tonight? Yes. Well, you won't perish. <laughs> you will not perish, but you will have ever, everlasting, life. everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, say that with me. Oh. You know your seats praise God well um, how many y'all glad to be here I'm glad to be looking at you praise God I love each and every one of you my older brothers and my younger brothers my older sisters and my younger sisters praise God <laughs> hallelujah okay let's 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 uh, talk about God's tithe and our offering let's go to one of our house scriptures which would be Malachi Chapter 3 and verse 10. Well, let's start in verse 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Okay, so that's good to know that he does not change, right? So let's go on down to verse 8, and he says, Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, How have we robbed you? And tithe and in offerings you are cursed with the curse you whole nation for you are robbing me now this next part is not a choice he didn't say maybe you should bring he said bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and test me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you that there will not be enough room to receive it. Okay, well, that's the reason for us to celebrate. One, because once we decide that we're going to take part in this, 
Once we decide we're going to take part in this, we change our financial address. You can be from the wrong side of the tracks, and this will get you right. Okay, this doesn't say um, what race you are. It doesn't say what kind of family you come from. All it asks is that you be obedient and bring your tithe. And then he's going to pour you out a blessing that you don't have enough room to receive it. Right? And then he says he's going to rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground and the vines in your field will not fail or bear fruit, says the Lord of hosts. And then everybody's going to call you blessed. Amen? So how did you get that house? How did you get that house? Well, um, I honor God with what he asked me to honor him with. And then I take the other 90 percent and let's go over here to, to Luke 638. We take the other 90 percent. And it says give. And what's going to happen next? Huh? It's going to be given to us. How? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men give unto you? Now, um, there's going to be some patience that's required in this, right? Because money is not going to rain down from heaven. He said, who's going to give? Men. So it's going to have to be some patience in this. It may come next week, may come next month, may come next year, but it's coming, right? This has to be done in faith, and faith must continue. Because you read that God is, is, is the same. He doesn't change. Titus 1-2 says he cannot lie, right? So this is going to happen. But we have to protect our heart because the enemy will say, bro, you gave your last hundred. Where is that? It's been three months. <laughs> ain't, nothing, ain't nothing happening. Faith must continue. Right? We have to open up our mouth and rehearse to God what he said to, to us. Right? We remind him of what he said. Lord, you said if I give, it's going to be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. I have changed my confessions to thank you. Amen. Right? So instead of saying, God, you said, I said, God, thank you that because I give, it is given unto me. When I said thank you, what does that mean? I'm receiving it. It's already done. Are y'all still here? Okay, let's go to Proverbs 10, 22. See, when I, went to, when I started going to Agape, I was fresh off the streets. My language, my language was still streets. And I had some good men to come along beside me and guide me. And I watched them do this. And then I had my wife was, who was encouraging me because, you know, an uh, ex-drug addict coming off the street, he's re he really done want to take his money and give it to somebody. But I had some good men to walk me through this. And, um, you know, the goodness of, of God is what caused men to repent. And I saw the goodness of God on these guys' lives. And I saw how their wives were dressing. I saw that how they were driving and how they were living. <laughs> and I was like, man, I want some of this. <laughs> and uh, and they were so, they were just so patient. Wasn't you, David? Patient. Because I wasn't, right? I'm a baby Christian. I'm like, when is this, when is this going to happen? Right? And my wife, she'd always, honey, you just got to trust God. You just got to trust God. And I remember we didn't, we, I think we might have had like four or five pieces of bologna. Enough to, for her to have a sandwich, Isaiah to have a sandwich, and me get two pieces of meat. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, 
And this woman, you know, we live in drug infested territory. And this woman came and knocked on the door. She's a drug addict because I was I used to see her out in the streets when I was getting high. And she came knocking on the door. And I went to the door. And she's like, I was wondering if y'all got some need. I said, no, we don't have nothing to eat. And I closed the door. My wife, she came to the door. She's like, who is that? I said, oh, it's just some woman. So she go and call the lady back. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm saying, let's see what she want. So the lady told and she gave her what we had. I just turned and walked away. Because I was mad. Right? But she had a revelation of Luke 6, 38, right? I have you know that a week later, what was the store that was down the street from us? It was a grocery store, called us and told us we had won a drawing or something. $200 worth of groceries from a sandwich. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> well, what if she hadn't given the sandwich? What would we be? Hungry. Because that bologna was all we had. Right? I'm not sure if we even had enough meat or bread for all of us to, but because she gave. Right? And because we give, God is going to do his side. We just need to do our end. Right? We do our end in faith, and he'll do his. Right? Keep our mouth right. Keep our mouth right. Sometimes, I mean, that's just how I am. I just, God, I trust you. We gotta keep our mouth right. Amen. So if you need, if you'd like to give, that should be an envelope in the back of the seat in front of you. If you would like to text to give, you can text FBLR plus amount to 28950. And uh, let's put a picture of uh, Sister Kim of our opportunities we got up. Now, um, the reason I like showing these is because one of them is how I'm going to get my wife her car. One of them is how I'm going to get out of debt. And then the other one is how I'm going to keep my pockets full. So there's three opportunities. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Each one of them has an assignment. So what does that mean? I'm a money missionary. Right? All my monies have an assignment. EAV, I'm not going all over the United States, but my money is. Amen? Word supply, going all over the United States, all over the states. Right? And then um, Ezra Project, we got a new house. And I'm believing I got an office in the house. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that's increasing. Praise God. So we have several opportunities for you to give into and to give your money assignment. What we make happen for others, God is going to make happen for us. Amen. So if you would like to stand to your feet, we're going to sow our seed. We got the Ten Confessions, ma'am. We don't, that's fine. But I like saying it and getting it in the ground. No? We don't have it? We should know it by heart. I had to close my eyes, though. There it is. Here we go. Raise, raise your seed to the air, y'all. Because I am in Christ, I receive supernatural increase and promotion, restoration of all the enemy has stolen, honor in the midst of adversaries, increased access, especially real estate, greater victories in the midst of greater odds or impossibilities, Recognition, even when I seem to be the least likely to receive it. Prominence and preferential treatment. Petitions granted even by ungodly civil authority. Policies, rules, regulations, and laws changed to my advantage. Battles won, I won't have to fight because God fights for me. As I tithe and give offerings, I am believing in the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses. Benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, 
gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decrease, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Y'all can come rejoicing. Hallelujah. The Lord is good to us. And he's so faithful. Um, let's open our Bibles to John 10.10. 10. If I had the title, this, it would be You Can Believe. Get this. You Can Believe. Um, we're going to be reading quite a bit out of Amplified just to give you guys a heads up. Okay, let's read John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come. The thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. Okay? So, to the full, till it overflows. So, notice the stark differences in the both. Obvious. One comes that we have life in abundance. The other comes to destroy that life. Okay? So, we're living in a world more than ever now that as for, you know, for you and I, we have to govern our life by this word. We have to. Because the difference in some places for Christians, you don't know the difference. <laughs> you talk to them, you don't know the difference. And that's sad to me. When I make the statement, I'm referencing every single part and not excluding any part of it. We should have a word life. A life that's governed by the word. Amen. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? So, here I am, fresh off the streets, talking bad. <laughs> I mean, not like real bad, but I'm saying some things I shouldn't be saying. And uh, I had to learn the conduct of the kingdom. Amen? Now, sometimes things are allowed to hang around that shouldn't be allowed to hang around. Okay? Say, for instance, um, sinuses, sinuses, right? Sinuses are allowed to hang around. But something serious comes to attack your body, and you want to be healed from that. Well, Explain to me how the sinuses are still here, but you want something major to be healed. Are y'all seeing what I'm talking about? Or you, um, you, um, you're in debt, and God says bring the tithe and give an offering, but you won't do that. Right? Luke 6, let's go to Luke 6. Let's go to Luke 6. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I might better stick to my notes. Let's go to Luke 6. Luke 6, verse 46. See, the world is a sense-ruled place and would be ruled according by their senses. So here we go. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you. Next verse. For everyone who comes to me and listens to me, listens to my words in order to heed th their teaching 
and does them, I will show you what he is like. Next verse. He is like a man building a house who dug and went down deep and laid a foundation upon the rock. And when the flood arose, next verse, the torrent broke against that house and could not shake or move it because it had been securely built or founded upon a rock. Next verse. But he who merely hears and does not practice doing my words is like a man who built his house on the ground without, next verse, a foundation against which the torrent burst and immediately it collapsed and fell, and the breaking and ruin of that house was great. Again, our life should be a word life. So what was this house built on? The rock. So when I entered Pastor Anna's life, my intentions wasn't good. I mean, I saw her come through that gas station. I was looking through that window. My mind was not on getting saved. Okay? But she let me know real quick that her life was founded on the rock. She wasn't, she wasn't having none of that other stuff. Okay? She said, if you want to you wanna, you wanna hang out with me, you got to go to church. So I figured I'd go. Yeah, I figured I'd go. And when I went in, I had brothers greeting me. I had Asians, I had white people, I had black people, I had some people from Africa, all lined up. And then they hugged on me. I'm like, yo. Like, I mean, all of them. Oh, we're, so we're glad to see you. Love you, brother. I was like, Anna, what's wrong with them? She said, like, they're just glad, glad to see you. I said, okay. Then we go upstairs to the, to the uh, balcony. And, you know, praise and worship was, uh, you know, was good off the chain. And uh, then Pastor Caldwell walked out there. I said, I said you didn't tell me it was a white man preaching here. That's how I was brought up. Right? She said, boy, just be quiet and sit down. But, man, when he opened his mouth, when he opened his mouth, that word started working on me. And I was like, hmm, it's okay. Because I was needing what he was giving. What he was proclaiming, I was needing. See, my life didn't have no foundation. I was going whichever way the wind blew. Right? No foundation. Whichever way the wind blew, I was heading that way. Right? But he was ministering the word. And I just kept going back. And then I had the urge to get rid of the drugs. Right? What was going on? My mind was starting to be renewed. The word was starting to transform my mind. Right? So I said, she's like, you want to go back? I said, yeah. Because I wanted to go with her and I wanted to go hear the word. <laughs> and I kept going back. But then I got to the point to where I don't want no more drugs. And, you know, they were saying, brother, you need to go and uh, need to go to the, all these places outside the VA. I said, OK. So I went to one, the one they used to have over there off of Wolf Street. And uh, man, I went in there and I came out wanting to go smoke every drug I could find in Little Rock. I told I told her, I said, honey, I ain't going back over there. She said, why? I said, I want to get high. And I said, I know I don't want to, you know, really. I said, but that's how it made me feel. So every time Agape opened the door, that's where I was. I was getting that foundation laid. Right? P piling in that word because we live in a drug infested. I mean, you could walk out my front door and get whatever you wanted. Okay? So then I got to the point to where I got a job, a good job. But I couldn't, we only had one car. Her and the kids had to go one way. I had to walk to the bus stop, which means I had to walk out my front door and walk through all of that. I needed the word to keep me. I needed the word for my foundation, right? So I was like, Lord, what do I do? So I used to watch her in the morning before she go to work in that praise and worship God. I would peek through the around the corner and just watch what she was doing. 
And I noticed that the environment would change. And then she'd go off to work. So uh, there was a day when I wasn't working, and I just tried it. And he came. And it, things changed. I just sat there, and I just cried like a baby. Because one, I didn't know what to do, but I know that something was going on on the inside. Next week, I could walk down that street with boldness, with no fear, nothing. See, because when he came to visit me, I knew that he was okay with me and how I used to live. Because the way I was brought up, I wasn't taught that. You understand what I'm saying? I was taught that God basically had favorites. But when he came and visited me, I knew he was okay with me and that he would keep me. So I walked through, and they didn't even know who I was. Much money I had spent with them, they didn't even know who I was. And that was good. Right? That was good. So my life was built, became built on, and, and founded on the word. The word was my rock and my foundation. Amen? So Jesus said he came that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly to the overflow. So if you're in a place and you need a move of God or you're facing something that you've been taking a stand on for against for some time, then you got to stay in the fight. You got to stay in the fight. Faith must continue. Faith must continue. Continue. This is kind of like a shotgun sermon, so y'all stay with me. So let's go to 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. Our faith must continue. Kim, if I'm going too fast, that's King James. If I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down, and I will. For whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So we wonder why the enemy tries to get us out of our godly character. Because he knows we win. Right? So he tries to get us to hear the wrong thing, believe the wrong thing, and say the wrong thing. He tries to get us to hear the wrong thing, Believe the wrong thing and say the wrong thing. Because if we say the wrong thing, it gets in our heart. And the wrong thing in our heart can create an unbelieving heart. Right? So if I say, um, I can confess that and believe that God wants me to prosper financially and believe that he doesn't want me to prosper physically. If that's what I'm listening to and that's what I'm saying. Right? That's not why Jesus came. He's saying he came so we could have it all. Not have one part and then you not have the other part. Amen? So faith must continue until we see the picture of what we hope for. We have to stay in the fight because it will manifest if it isn't aborted by speaking words that aren't God's words. We can't allow challenges that we see with our natural eyes to govern how we hear, believe, and speak. It's a fail-proof formula if we hear, believe, and speak the right words. Amen? So if we allow ourselves to be governed by what we see, then we, that person will begin to speak what they see. Nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. Evil words that are spoken into their heart. Then they don't experience any manifestations and unbelief or a hardened heart is developed in that area toward God. Amen? Unbelief will say such things as, oh, man, it's okay. I've lived this long with it. Unbelief will say, I got enough for me and mine. Unbelief will say, 
It's okay. As long as I get by today. Or I got just enough. Well, just enough is not enough. When there's an opportunity to have more than enough. Amen. Just enough is not enough. When there's an opportunity to have more than enough. Right? Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 11, let's go there. He said that he's our good shepherd. And he lays down his life for us. Right? So if he gave his all, John chapter 10, verse 11. So if he gave his all, then we should try to get it all. (laughs) Amen? Amen? If he gave his all, we should try to give everything he, he died to give us. It says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So if a sheep is wounded, the shepherd fixes the wound. Right? The sheep is injured, the shepherd cares for him. Is that right? Okay. So let's go back to Luke 6. Go back to Luke 6, please. Jump back over there. And verse 46. And it says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Whoever comes to me. So we got we to gotta, we gotta do something first because he's done it all. So we need something to happen. We got to go to him, which is the word. We got to go to the word, right? We go to the word, and then he says, and here's my words, and then does them. So notice all this is action. None of this is sitting around waiting on God to do something. All of this is action on our part, Okay? So our life should emulate the word. A word life should be our continual pursuit. Complacency and just enough are not enough. There has to be a doing of the word because it helps quiet the flesh when it's screaming and it wants its way. (laughs) The rock is the word and the foundation of our life should be based on that. Notice the word is the reason for stability in this person's life. The word is the stability in this person's life. The word is faithful. The word is sure. The word is true. The word is safe. The word is strong. The word is protection. The word is a deliverer. The word is a keeper. These are all just a few reasons and advantages that we have when we hear, believe, and speak the word. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 23 and verse 1. Praise God. Psalms 23, verse 1. It reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Amplified says, The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. So if we're allowing God, Jesus to be our shepherd, we're, we're in need of nothing. We're not settling for anything. Amen? Our words are lining up with what he says. We're going to him, we're hearing him, and we're doing what he asked us to do. That's a life that's built on the, and has a foundation on the word. That's a life that's not easily blown in any direction. That's a life that's not going to fall for just anything that comes along. Because there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Right? Say, for instance, um, I was listening to some stuff. Um, it wasn't nothing harmful. It was just news. And... Um, yeah, just news, but exactly. And Holy Spirit said, 
Don't listen to that. I said, okay. I changed it. Because if, if I'm honest with you, I, I had a little resentment building up in my heart. That's when I got off Facebook. I had a little resentment building up in my heart. But what does it say? He'll feed me, he'll guide me, and he'll shield me. So he said, son, turn the news off. <laughs> so I turned the news off. So my, I'm still in love. Amen? So it's not always like a, something big. It's always something small. It can be something small. Amen? And unbelief will start off small. But it'll grow. Just like I was talking about the sinus infection, and then you want, a person might want healing for cancer. Well, do you believe God couldn't heal you from the sinus infection, but you want him to heal you from cancer? How does that line up? See, if we do what Jesus said about getting delivered from the sinus infection, if something else comes along that's bigger, it's the same thing. The formula is the same. Amen? Uh, let's, uh, so Jesus is our good shepherd, and he gave his life for us so that we may live. Amen? We have to come to a place of believing where we wholly walk and conduct our life in agreement with his sacrifice. Amen. So in the life of a believer, and I said this, I'm just going to say it again. Um, sometimes things don't seem to be life threatening or maybe a challenge that they can, you know, that they maybe they can get by or that is tolerated. The danger of this is, is that that person isn't believing. If you're not believing, for a Christian not to believe, they ain't living. Amen? A believer believes. Mark 9.23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible. Put that up there, please. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. So we ought to believe God for everything. <laughs> Because what we need to live on this earth is in, is in the kingdom. We have to get more discipline at refusing the little things because they will grow. Amen. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's the reason unbelief is dangerous. Okay. For us to see anything, we have to believe for it. Amen? Okay. So, what can stop an abundant overflow life? Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. We can't just let these little things that we've been getting by with continue to hang around. Amen? Amen? Because life is going to continually challenge us. So I want to deal with the small stuff before, if anything else comes along. Right? Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say next unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Okay, so what if the mountain is not moving? It's moving. It didn't get there overnight. It didn't grow to a mountain overnight. But it's moving. Because the word said it's moving. Right? From the inside out. I remember um, I had $22,000 worth of student loan debt. And um, I was confessing, I know, for a year. And uh, one morning... I was looking at that debt, and it just looked different. And I knew something was different about it, but I went on through my, you know, my confessions as usual. And the bill came in, and it was around Christmas time, and I wanted to get my kids something, so I just said I was going to call them and tell them I didn't want to pay it. Just push it back a month. So he said, okay, I need to send you some paperwork for you to sign. It'll be fine, because I was never late. So he sent the paperwork, and... I was just going to sign, and then I said, like, let me read it. I heard my wife's voice. She said, yeah, I never read things. So I said, let me, let me read it. And I read it, and I saw something down there that said, if you're a veteran, you qualify for. So I said, hmm. 
I said, I believe I received that, and I signed this in the back. So he called me and uh, said, uh, you've been making all these payments, and you weren't supposed to. I said, what'd you say? He said, yeah. So I said, so I get all that money back? He said, no, you're not going to get all of it back, but you're going to get quite a bit back. So I said, okay, I told my wife, and I was shouting about it. It hadn't even came yet. I was shouting. And uh, so I was in the shower one day, and we were getting ready to go somewhere, and she came. She said, hey, you know, you got this in the mail? And we shouted about it and asked the Lord what he wanted us to do with it. You know, we tithed and gave an offering off of it. But it, the word works. There was a mountain of debt, right? In a year's time, just gone by doing what he asked us to do in the word. The word works. Amen. We just have to continue in the faith. We can't allow stuff just to hang around. Amen. I'm working on getting rid of some stuff. Because what, 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 what Pastor Philip and Pastor Michelle do is stretch you and push you to do better. Amen. And uh, we got to do better. Right? We got people that are coming that are going to need to know how to get what we get what we got and live how we living. Hey Amen. They're going to have to be taught. So I want to be able to teach them. Hey Amen. I want to be able to teach them. So I'm not going to allow anything that, that's, <laughs> to hang around that's going to hinder that. Okay? So unbelief is, here's just a definition, is believing something other than the word of God and what he has to say about the situation you're facing. Okay, so someone can believe Jesus was raised from the dead and believe he's the Lord and that he's coming soon, but that person doesn't believe that what Jesus said or and is operating in unbelief. They, didn't, they believe in him, but they don't believe what he says. The word calls this an evil heart or a hardened heart. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Let's go there. I ain't calling you evil. <laughs> I am not. But like I said, we got to believe and, and, and walk in all the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. He didn't halfway uh, deliver us. He delivered us from everything, every bit of the curse. And we can't self-inflict ourselves with, with the evil words that grow crosswise with what he's saying. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. And it says, be t Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. The Amplified reads this way. Let me read to you in the Amplified real quick. These devices got a mind of their own. It says, therefore, beware, brethren, take care, lest there be any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses, listen to these words, refuses to cleave to, trust in, and rely on him, leading you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from living God. An unbelieving heart. An unbelieving heart can cause a person not to cleave, not to trust, and rely on God. An unbelieving heart can cause a person to turn away from God. That's strong. An unbelieving heart, an evil heart. But man, I've been believing for a long time. Continue in the faith. Faith must continue. Right? It's not God. Right? Malachi 3.6 says that I am the Lord. I do not change. Titus 1.2 says, which in the Amplified says, which the ever truthful God who cannot lie. He don't even know how to lie. We have to continue in the faith. 
And again, it's very important for us to believe because in Mark 9, 23, it tells us that all things are possible to him or her that believeth. This is where God wants us to live, in a place where all is possible through him and him alone. This is what sets us apart from the world. So we, un we, we overcome unbelief by changing or adjusting our attitude about the word. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's simple. You just settle that all the word is true. The word is it. If, the, if it's not matching up with the word, then I'm going with the word. Amen? The word is it. This is how I live. If it's not matching up with the word, I'm going with the word. Make it first place, between place, and in place. <laughs> it's, it's how we live, right? Go to the word, believe the word, and speak the word. And receive from the word. Amen? So we go to the word, believe the word, and speak the word, and receive the word. Okay? And most times it's just... It's just that we need to meditate on it a little bit. I heard um, Prophet Ford, he came here one time, he talked about reaping your harvest of financial blessings. He said a lot of times people miss it on the meditation side. Nobody want to meditate on it. Nobody want to spend any time getting the word in them and letting it grow and getting the root. That's all it is with this other stuff. Just have to meditate on it. And what the word really says about it to the point to where you see it. You see, I mean, you literally see it with your, phys with your uh, spiritual eyes. Amen. So let's go ahead and let's stand to our feet. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the season that we're in, a season of overflow, Lord, a season of blessings, a season of more than enough. Thank you, Father, that you're everything that you said you would be to us. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the good time that we're going to have with our loved ones, Lord, loving on them, eating good, giving out gifts, Lord, and receiving gifts, but you're the greater gift. You're the gift of all gifts, and we're thankful for you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. I love you. Y'all be safe and blessed going home. You're going on the road. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. And I'll see you when you get back. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming, sir.